So Rune's yeah, bath yeah. says, Can we see you? Well, we um, obviously can't. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll I'll keep it like this. I'll keep it like this. Okay. So ha hem. So it was a dark and stormy night. The moon was shining bright. Well, what hey. do you need me for then? <laughs> you you go ahead. No. Uh, oh, Code Mike is here. Hello. Every snowflake is shrouded as his face. Okay, I need. I did. I did actually say I wanted to make this yes, quick. Yes, go ahead. So, okay. Um. Actually, I'll do the 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 bit about. So. Very quickly, let's let's do the, the mechanics stuff first, and then we'll do the world building stuff after. Okay. So mechanics wise, I know that there are quite a lot of. Actually, let's do the the. What system are we using first of all? Old school essentials, advanced fantasy. Okay. Specifically, advanced fantasy, not basic. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll I'll 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 give you the access to the rules. It's fine. So okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so there are a whole bunch of optional rules. Mm -hmm. The ones that I've decided that I would like to use, and if you have input on this, please, of course, say. But ascending armor class, which is just regular armor class, how we now use it, basically roll higher than at or higher than a number to hit okay instead of using a whole matrix charge to figure out if you hit someone mm. mm -hmm. next is advanced character creation which means because in original dungeons and dragons there was only what class your character had so you would roll attributes sequentially just straight 3d6 uh, six times and then what numbers you got in that sequence made that character eligible to be X classes. They had prerequisite <laughs> numbers. Guys, my dice only rolls a one. I'm always stuck and, as the wizard. <laughs> and so there, were, there was no difference between races and classes. Mm. So, for example, dwarf or elf was considered a class. Because they that's were weird. Yeah. Well, Hashtag I see no race. Kinda. <laughs> but also, if you consider that uh, old school D and D was nice. pretty much a ripoff of Lord of the Rings in many regards to its world buildings, <laughs> to the point that they got sued Oof. for calling their halflings hobbits. Oh, oh did they yeah. actually? Oh, yes, yeah. which is why they changed so it to halflings. It was released like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. The world is mostly populated by humans. And so an elf or a dwarf has very special abilities, mm. similar to how a fighter or a wizard would have very special abilities. And so that's kind of why they were all just classes. Now, since OSE is a more modern remake, they've got, as an optional rule, the advanced character creation where it's split up, so you mm. can choose a race and a class, and that's what I go what we're going with. That's good. Next is uh, re-rolling low ability scores. So if you get really really low ability, so actually this leads to the first question: What is fun? What sounds fun for people? Do you want to just roll your three d your three d six six times and then? Uh, put them where you want, which is not how the game is really supposed to be played, but how modern games do it. Or does it sound fun for you to just go down the line and stick with whatever numbers you have and then kind of be stuck with a class that either fits that or that doesn't really work as well as it could because of the values? Personally, I, think I prefer the choosing one. Hmm. I thought yeah, that I like I, I like to put them where I I want them because I figure yeah. like as I'm growing up and I'm looking for a career, I'm going to work towards that career. You know, like maybe I lift weights to get strong so I can be a warrior, or maybe I work on my dexterity because I want to be an archer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. That makes so by the time I'm I'm a, I'm a level one starting out, I've mm -hmm. you know trained. Years of academy yeah, you've already training. gone you've already gone through a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I would have been really surprised if you had gone with the alternative. <laughs> also, I would have been excited, know, but really surprised. People, people tend to like think of their character personality first, and then traits. Mm. After. Yeah, that's not really how the game was played back then, because this well, we're me... not back then. Well, <laughs> this, we're this, sitting this... around a stone table. I know. <laughs> this leads back, me back when I was in high school. This leads me into. <laughs> Sorry, this leads me into the next point, which is that in Old School Essentials, the characters, ha the, ca the classes, have a lot less mechanics to enable them to do specific things, but instead a lot more is, a lot more emphasis is put on what could you do? Like, what could a guy do in this situation? And then if, if this guy has a whole lot of strength or some spells or s some sneaking abilities, stuff like that. See, I like that. It's common, then, common sense. Yeah, mm. but those abilities tend to be all the better for it. Like, for example, sleep spell or, or, or other spells, even first level spells, even though spellcasters only get very few per day, I think only one per day is starting out, the actual spell, when it says turns, a turn is 10 minutes. So when it that's says six insane. turns, that oh. first level spell lasts for an hour. Ooh. And there are- Enjoy your nap. Yeah, and there are, or, or charm person, I think lasts for half an hour or something Ooh. like that. Enjoy your date. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, so we'll see. a lot so the mechanics that are there tend to be much more powerful and mm. versatile, even though the actual qu quantity is lower. That's interesting. So that also leads into another bit of the kind of a realism part of it, where the the main way you're supposed to gain XP to level up is through bringing treasure back to mm. a safe place. Mm. Each gold piece of value you bring back counts as one point of XP. <gasps> Guys. Which means... Guys, we're going to be playing like an MMORPG where we sell all our stuff. Whoa! Which means you don't have to sell it. You just need to bring oh, it back to a safe place. <laughs> Love it. If you, it goes if, with... It goes we with, will go. It goes um, with what I was planning for my character. So, oh. so what we'll do <laughs> is... The we'll... thing is that are we going to level up? in the last one we didn't yeah mm. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a dungeon we're gonna get all the monsters out of it and then build a castle on top i mean <laughs> easy it, access it would work. to respawn yeah so, and we'll hmm. fill up the dungeon with <coughs> everything we find hmm. the dungeon is technically ours it counts <laughs> anyway in the interest of level notes, 18 in the interest yeah. of, of keeping this a bit short because Sorry. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so that means that only a small part of the XP is actually intended to come from defeating monsters. So if you can find out a way of getting at the monster's treasure without putting your lives on the line by actually fighting that thing with all those teeth and magic ooze creeping out of it, then that's, much, that, that's how the game's intended to be played. It's much less about, oh, I've got all these fancy fighting powers that all go off as these, oh, these, brilliant, <laughs> these, these spectacular fights happen. Mm. And that does happen later on when you get higher levels, but not at starting levels. He's obsessed, I tell you. So, so it's more realistic in that regard. Yeah. But this also means that characters tend to, at least first level characters, mm. tend to have very few hit points. Oh, yeah. I see. Which means that characters Still. reach... Characters can get down to zero hit points really quite quickly if they act rashly or if things just don't go very well. And if you hit zero hit points on this game, you're dead. 
No saving throws. No <laughs> negative hit points. It's only it's a just, glitch wound. No. If, if you hit zero hit points, that's it. So. Oh no. So there's no dying stage. Nope. Okay. So. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping that rule. Yep, because oh, that no. is crucial for oh, no. all the rest of the game. Oh, boy. So you can't even be unconscious then. Well, that that is one thing we'll get to in in a, in a moment. <laughs> we can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, no. so that that is one thing. So yeah. characters dying is not entirely unlikely. So yeah. if that does if that does happen, or Blue when says speed run. Yeah. Well, or rather, when that inevitably <laughs> happens at some point. Yeah, back up. Back up. Well, either 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 that or just just right when you won. They're very they're very fast to make, and we'll just get that new character in and we'll continue to have fun. And so, what, what if we get yeah. attached to our characters? So, well, thing... of course we get attached to our characters. No. That's why we don't want them to die. But that's mm. where the adventure part of it comes in. So should each player always have two characters handy? Um, that's how a lot of people played back then, as far as I can gather. But that's not necessarily what you need to do because that I think that kind of can get you in the mindset of, oh, the character I'm playing currently might just die next uh, in the next disposable. five minutes, well, and now I've got this replacement right yeah, there already true. waiting. Uh, the f- <laughs> well, my character is going to be identical twins. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It just it all depends how um, with the two hours in the session. I'm not sure if you could even introduce the new character in the same session, but well, you'd be. The other players would have to mourn at the very least. Yeah, they can't of just course. say, "Oh, yeah. don't worry, Fred so will be I, back, but so, he'll look a bit different." <laughs> so the way I would like to rule that is, if a character death happens in a session, then that then they get booted from chat. No, yeah. of course not. Bye bye. <laughs> no, you, you can then that player. See you next week. Then that player, of course. You you can stay in chat and haunt everybody. <laughs> what I was going to say is that that player, of course, still stays there and invested in the action as a player. Because we need time to let that sink in of what just happened. Mm. And then in the time from that session to the next session, there is... We can either... Uh, just get a completely new character in, or we can do another interesting thing, which is that NPCs or retainers, because at from a certain uh, at a certain point, parties are expected in this game to have some retainers with you, whether that's to stay with a wagon, or to carry a torch, or to just carry treasure, because. Getting all of that treasure back to a safe place to get all of that delicious XP might not be easy. Mm. So actually hiring retainers is a large part of that. When did we get braces to need retainers? Mm. So you're, <laughs> sa- you're saying I'm going to reincarnate as my horse. Whoa! <laughs> get Jay in so... here, he'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> he would. But that's beside the point. <laughs> so, um, I'm open to the possibility of uh, a player, or, or of one of these NPCs or retainers becoming a new player character and then continuing forward that way. Mm. So, picking a character is already in the plot. That'd but be interesting. Anyway, like I, said, I, I know. I'll be reincarnated <laughs> as my horse. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, hey, I know, like, Alga over there was, like, really quiet and all this other. Like, but she's got Tap. haunted, and now she's really outgoing and actually a bard. <laughs> <laughs> change of <Yeah>. heart. <laughs> um, change of spirit. <laughs> yeah, well, change of so, things, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> I wanted to have mm. that brief conversation about character death. Yeah. Because I've never GM'd the system before, and so I don't know how how deadly deadly is. And so... Well, if you get in, if we get into bad situations, character deaths might happen. 
And that's sad, but it's a part of things. Mm-hmm. So is that how? How does everybody feel about that? Are you worried or excited, yeah. maybe? Or I, I kind of worried because I kind of had an idea for a character that I really like, but but you know, you you live and learn, and you live and you die, and you live and you reincarnate. Hmm. As a horse. And, and if there is one of my campaigns, because I'm going to use fifth edition. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Hmm. And if there, if depending on what we get into, we'll we'll see how that goes. But hmm. just just a as a thing to keep in mind. Yeah. Now, uh, quickly continuing. Um, what's using... Sometimes I, I find when you do that permadeath kind of thing yeah. real easy, people sometimes tend to be real timid and cautious and never make it anywhere because they're afraid of dying. Hmm. Well, that is a good point and something that I will have to keep in mind. But the place that you're going to start in is going to be really a really quite safe place safe unless you do some and i am i am going to of course always going to put warnings or or give signals of this is a dangerous place so Trickle there is danger here Run you could die. <laughs> so yeah it's a safe well, that's place what i mean though but you hmm. never leave the safe the pe- people sometimes tend to well i'm not going to leave the safe place or go do anything dangerous because I'm invested in my character and I don't want him to die. Yeah, because, well, the thing is with, with other it's systems... It's like, you guys go in the dungeon, I'll stay up here and guard <laughs> the entrance. Yeah. And then once, oh, they're, once they're in, it just rounds <laughs> off. Uh, hmm. But yeah. Well, if we... Let's, let's see how it goes. And if we do end up finding that the, the threat of characters dying that easily is something that's just not fun then we can augment it there are uh people have put optional rules in where uh where there are saving throws well where, where there are delaying st- stages when you mm. hit zero that there are delaying stages and then your character dies like there's in modern systems but okay yeah all right, everybody say before we go in the dungeon so we can <laughs> reload. <laughs> so. But the auto save trick is when you go in. Hmm. <laughs> when the cutscene starts. Anyway, uh, oh, no. uh, I need to continue through this. So, we're using. Yeah. So, uh, with ability scores. Uh, yeah. If you've got, like, across the board, like, really low ability scores, like. The book says, as an example, like 8, for example, because you only roll 3d6, then you can just re-roll the whole thing. Also... <laughs> I rolled triple ones three times! <laughs> also, we're using the optional rule of re-rolling ones and twos for ability scores. And also, we're using the secondary skill. I mean, there's a list that'll, that's in, that'll be available to you, of course. Yeah. Secondary skills, which is basically... In addition to your class, you've also got what your regular occupation either is or was. So if you're like carpenter, um, yeah, like if if you if like if you pick like carpenter or something, mm. then you would be expected to know carpenter stuff and to be able to make carpenter related things quite easily and to be able to use carpenter tools adeptly. So yeah. it's just a general common sense kind of thing. That's good. Um, yeah, we're lifting uh, class and level restrictions because originally certain... Um, hmm? Strict single class or can you do hybrid like... Well... Multi, <coughs> multi-class or anything like that? So... <clears throat> I... Because I've never GM'd this before... I, I mean, we're starting as level one characters anyway, so um, it will, we've only got one class to begin with. But then, I at the moment, I would like to stick with one class. But if you want to multi-class, 
If that is something that you're really interested in, then we can talk about that later when it becomes relevant. I've already backseat mine in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, so... I thought it was an insult. <coughs> no. <laughs> Originally, <Never>. the... <laughs> there are level restrictions associated to certain classes. So certain classes can not uh, reach higher levels if they're played by a certain race for power reasons. Um, but where I've decided to lift that because to me that just doesn't sound fun. Uh, and in addition to that, we're using the human racial abilities because by default, humans don't get any sort of uh, bonus or, or, or abilities because their, because their special ability is that they are fighters, they are wizards, they are rangers, they are thieves. They, can, they have those classes. That's what a human is. An elf is an elf or a dwarf is a dwarf. Mm. But humans have all that other stuff. And then if you open that up to... Humans uh, are not basic. But if you put that into... Uh, if you open that up for other race, for races and classes to be separated, then now suddenly an elf wizard or a dwarf wizard is always objectively going to be better than a human, because a human doesn't get anything, whereas the others, the others two yeah. do. Mm -hmm. And so there are sp special human racial abilities to kind of boost them up a bit. Okay. Uh, which is what we're using. Uh, right. What races are there? Yeah, I'll get to that in one moment oh, at the sorry. beginning of the world building stuff. Which teacher, I, teacher. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. Yeah. Sir, so. Sir. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you didn't actually want to say anything. Okay. No. <laughs> you, you can lower your hand. You can lower your hand. So. <laughs> he just shoots you a wink. <laughs> Activate face cam. <laughs> there you go. Hello. <coughs> Wasn't on stream. Was the hand? Sorry. Entry, yeah. It's all right. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So. Yes. I would also like to use the um, encumbrance option two, which is the detailed encumbrance, where basically you track not just the weight of treasure, but also the weight of equipment. So, and this, this, this system tracks weight in terms of coins. So a backpack, for example, can hold the weight of 200 coins. Mm -hmm. So the entire thing is geared towards, okay, how much treasure can we carry out of this dungeon? Basically. <laughs> well, we Heck could. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> Inventory management. So, <laughs> yeah, and that's also where horses and carts and mules come into play. Anyway, oh, oh my. so, also, advanced spellbook rules. Basically, in regular rules, wizards, or magic users, only begin play with, I think, a single spell in their book <laughs> that they can memorize once per day, and then that's that. Oh god. But with... you, went, you went out the house with one Pokemon. You went out the house with mm. one spell. <laughs> <laughs> so, but with the advanced spellbook rules, you've got as many spells in there as I think your intelligence modifier. So that okay. at least, even though you don't get more spells per day just from that, you do get to choose which spell you think will be useful in the coming day. Plus, of course, there are going to be loads of magic items anyway, so don't worry about that. Mm. Plus, Ooh. plus, finding scrolls and wands and staves that contain magic spells for a magic user to then use to cast spells is also a big part of this. So you're not supposed to m m be relying entirely on your memorized spells, but also from other sources. Mm. Um, we're also using monster morale, which basically means when the monsters are losing, depending on what, mon what type of monster they are if in a fight, they need to roll. If they roll badly, then they just run away. 
bravely. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Pokemon are dead. Run away! Run away! <coughs> yeah, sorry. Someone says, oh, of course, oh, I'm immune to this. Anyway, variable weapon damage. This just means different weapons use different, uh, do different damage. By default, each weapon, it, basically, if you're making an armed attack, you deal 1d6 damage. But with this optional rule, weapons have different damages, which just makes sense to me. Yeah. Charging into melee and parrying are just two things to make, well, plus splash weapons, just to make things a bit more varied and make sense. And then subduing, which is the last house, the kind of the last optional rule, is that there's a, that each creature has a separate po- a hit point pool, which is the subdual pool. And when uh, bl- uh, blunt, uh, non-lethal damage is dealt, and that reaches zero, then you're unconscious. Okay. So you, you can choose whether you want to actually attack them to try to kill them or to mm. try to knock them out. Now, I see. there are small amount... Sorry, I hit you too hard a bit, brain mm. damage. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not now, the this is the last little bit of yeah. technical stuff. <coughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, for, the house, for, the, for the stuff that I have, which is house rules. Firstly, the spell read languages... Uh, is forbidden as a starting spell because Mm -hmm. for plot reasons that just yeah Uh, next is uh, next actually yeah yeah, uh, the kind of living languages that's languages that are spoken and written and uh, that are commonly in use are common uh, Dwarven, Elvish, Gnomish, and Goblin. All other languages are considered old tongues and are used exclusively in uh, um, in academia. Which does not which does not mean that they won't be useful to have. It's just they won't really be used by people just talking. Won't be spoken. The folk. Mm. Now here's one. So I don't need to learn dragon. Well. <laughs> Depends on what you want to do. I get it though. Yeah. <coughs> Just get a bit of a rough throat. One second. It's okay. Don't need to apologize. So, <laughs> two more. Uh, this is one that I found on Reddit from, which is actually from a different uh, book, uh, like Booklet. expansion book or something, mm. which is. That arcane spellcasters can spend one day per spell level and 100 gold pieces per spell level, which isn't that much when we get into how much gold we need for <laughs> XP, to create a spell scroll of any spell they know. Which means if you have the money for it, and you're, you're uh, like a, a match who's like a, an arcane spellcaster, you can... Just walk around with a giant sack full of magic missile spells, and you can cast like ten or fifteen or twenty, however many you want, like every turn, magic missile, magic missile, and not expend a single one of your memorized spells. Yeah. If you've got the money and time for it. Now, one little tiny Excuse bit. Excuse me, guys. Give me a month. Mm. <laughs> well, you say that jokingly, but thing is, healing is really slow oh, no. which means that you're gonna have a lot of time anyway where you're gonna be resting fast forward like though. resting in safe places to regain yeah. those hit points guys we started this campaign when we were like in our 20s uh-huh. and now we're 72 when we were like eight well i mean yeah and in that time characters can do things like Write up spell scrolls, for example. Oh. That's interesting. Now, the very last one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If they've got thousands of gold. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. But you're going to need thousands of XP to level up anyway. So, the main way to get that is from gold. Or treasure. So, 
The last one is we're using the expanded equipment book, which just adds more equipment, which will be linked to as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the technical stuff done. Technical stuff. Uh, okay. So, yeah. The permitted classes is all of them. The permitted races is dwarves, elves, gnomes, and humans. Ah, uh, okay. Because I've not done world building for the others, because when I've previously done fantasy campaigns, I've pretty much just taken the standard can idea. You, hmm? Can you repeat them? Dwarves, elves, gnomes, humans. Uh, yeah. And yeah, because I've I've only taken the the stock ones, but for this mm. I've actually created my own versions of those races, and I won't go into details yet. So, Lou says, does gnome include garden gnome? Yeah, if you wanted to. If that's one of the subspecies. <laughs> <coughs> no garden. Okay, so uh, to make this very quick. So the setting, um, your world, the only world that you've known or anyone you know has known is the land of Kralak. It's an island about 30 miles across and it consists of a double peaked mountain. The slopes are covered in coniferous woodland and uh, like heather land for sheep and cattle, and there are rocky crags further up the slopes. Now, everybody you've ever known has been from here, and nobody else has ever come from the outside. So, for all you know, this is it. This is the world, and that's pretty much the viewpoint that mainstream everybody kind of seems to accept so there are two civilizations the downs folk downs uh, kind of means like hills mm -hmm. which is what where you guys are going to be part of which oh, is so we're in from the hills mm, well the downs folk is the for all the way from from the shore going all the way up the slopes to uh, kind of halfway up-ish the uh, mountain height, the, the double peaks. And then above that is the domain of the mountain people. Mountain now, people. the mountain people are a bit more monstrous, shall we say. So think, think yeah. like a uh, troll, like or or that, or like that that sort of direction, mm -hmm. hmm. or goblins. Uh, now I wanted, I've, be, I wanted to be a goblin. <laughs> ah, well, yeah, that unfortunately wouldn't no, work. No, it's okay. Or, it's okay. So um, a vertical barrier of standing stones exists to separate the two. And War Maria. Hmm? War Maria, attack on Titan. <clears> hmm. <throat> no context. So I'm gonna take your word for it. <laughs> uh right. Um so a long time ago, beyond anybody's living memory, the two fought seemingly endless wars, but then an accord was reached and the barrier was set up. The details of the accord are that every week, the Downs folk fill these great bowls that are placed along this, this, this barrier with food and charcoal. And then the mountain people take that and replace it with things like quarried stone and ores and gems and ice. And so this indirect trade has been going on for centuries at this point. And there hasn't been a war between the two since. Although, anyone who breaches 
the barrier is basically on their own uh, and whatever happens happens so yeah they're all Sorry, is that once a week or once a month once no once a week once, once a week so and it's seven days a week or yes okay <laughs> So what about holidays? Sorry. <laughs> there are also several ancient magic towers that stand along the island's coast. Each one is built of white marble and is detailed with ornate purple metals. But nobody knows what they do, and so they've just kind of entered the local folklore. People tell all sorts of stories about them. They don't really seem to do anything. So, the prevailing faith worships the two peaks as the ultimate divine, the creators of everything. So, the western peak is named Grandfather and the eastern is named Grandmother. Aww. So, yeah. Uh, and so... Depending on what your class is, e.g. druid or ranger, basically, you're all going to have homes in or around a village overlooking the southern coast of it, of the, the, the landmass, called Coppice Shale. Coppice Shale. Uh, Coppice Shale. I'll, you'll get the stuff later, don't worry. Okay, okay thank God. Because <laughs> I'm hurriedly making notes. Yeah. So... Its labor is divided. Uh, its labor is primarily focused on farming hazelwood for uh, wattling. Uh, but uh, I'm just reading my notes. But that that worry too much over time. I should probably skip that. Um, okay. So the campaign start will be three days before the midsummer festival. So everybody's preparing for. Uh, festivals and for the traditions and rituals and that sort of stuff. Um, I have prepared names for the different days of the week and kind of stuff that goes on around them, but I don't think we've got time to go into that. You'll get just get to read that. And then just a little bit of information I'll gloss over about the player playable races. So... I need some water, one second. Oh, God, Willis is in chat. Hello. It's been a while. <laughs> How have you been? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we'll start with dwarves. So, when the peaks were young, and the divine energy of life had not yet settled into its regular shapes, a bit of it fell back onto the crags of the mountain. From that stone sprung first sprang forth the first dwarves and in my <clears throat> sorry in my okay. setting dwarves are not just basically short bulky humans with beards their skin and hair actually looks like minerals and earth and they don't have regular eyes but instead they've got these gems in in their place uh, mm. usually like red like ruby gems but there are those variants mm. and so uh, yeah so they were the first people to originate from the material realm <clears throat> yeah. mm. um, and they never let us forget should, should we do this <laughs> next time because you, you'll, you'll no no it's fine it's fine it's fine don't worry don't worry um Yeah, so because of their origin, even if they can't explain it or, or don't even know anything about that, that, in my setting, is the kind of root cause for their love of masonry and stone carving and gems, because they feel that kinship to, that, that, to the stone from which they came. And so it's kind of like bringing purpose to the stone that didn't come to life and so that's kind of my thread through that but of course 
Uh, this is just general terms. Each individual is going to be different, of course, but um, just a general thing behind that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they tend to either rent people's basements because they really like living like in a bed of stone, like surrounded by stone or earth, or just in an underground house where it's just a ladder going down from a little sh uh, shed or something. So, uh, also, when a dwarf dies, they turn to solid stone, but their eyes remain as gems. So we can poke their eyes out and get yeah, here's, rich. Here's an engagement oh, ring. Oh. It was my mother's, and I mean my mother's eyes. Mm. I mean... If you want. <laughs> does the mother want? <laughs> I mean, Who's does she get a say? Waves not, want not. <laughs> anyway, so... <laughs> next are elves, and I will try to skim over for this. So, hmm. uh, elves are descendants of... Well, they, they are fey creatures, so fairy creatures, fey creatures. And they're descendants of true elves who originate from the... Uh, Fey realm, which is kind of like a a parallel existence to the material realm, but it's uh, separate usually, except in some areas where it kind of, well, we'll get to that uh, in the game. So, elves retain the ability to sense Fey presences because of this, because they still have that connection. Their ancestors, so this is long, 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 long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> well, the ancestors ancestors of the, the modern elves in, in the material uh, realm came to settle this world. And it all worked out great because they came through a gateway that was built. But then through an unknown calamity, the portal stopped working, and so they've been stranded here, along with every other fey creature that exists in the material world. And so because of this, over the eons, their connection to the fey realm has weakened further and further, which means that they've become more and more human in their appearance and ways. The lifespans have also shrunk from near immortality to just a few hundred years, about 300 years usually. And uh, when you look at an elf closely, then they just appear like a beautiful human with pointy ears and also slit pupils in bright light. But if you look at an elf from far away, light appears to shine through them like through wax. And they also might appear to float slightly above the ground at night. So they're definitely still fey, but just kind of losing some of that. Now, gnomes also originate from the fey realm. One second. Oh, I thought they originated in the garden. <laughs> just that subspecies. You don't think there are gardens in the fey realm? <laughs> anyway, we'll see. So, they are enamored by puzzles and by m mechanisms and that that sort of stuff, and so they were the first to build portals to other realms, including the material realm. And so, when they came through into the material realm and saw the comparative lack of magic. That was like the the best puzzle any gnome could have wished for, which is taming this world without magic through cleverness and through machines. And by machines, I mean like mechanisms like, for example, irrigation or water, like milling, water wheels, that sort of stuff. And so when the gates were broken in that calamity, Gnomes were actually quite happy, because they didn't really want to go back, most of them anyway. Now, because they were the first to 
come here. Um, actually, is that? Um, no, I'll leave that up because that, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, okay. Now, gnome, uh, gnomes tend to get along quite well with others who are also interested in their plans and devices and who can make use of that, which is why they tend to make their homes either in people's gardens or in the, the countryside or, or somewhere in locations like that. Not all of them, of course, but some of them. Now, uh, humans are unique among the races because they were not granted their status of peoplehood through divine will. Instead, they originated as nothing but wild beasts in nature, animals. And it was their own will and determination that drove them to claw their way to sapiens, to being on equal footing to the dwarves and the elves and the gnomes. Now, because of this, their presence and actions are more often than not an unpredictable factor in divine plans, and humans' fates are usually not directed by such powers, unless sought deeply, basically. If you're going to play a paladin or a cleric, and you're human, you're going to have the same amount of divine energy behind you as if you were someone else. So, this her uh, heritage, of course, actually I can skip that because that's... Uh, uh, yeah, this uh, heritage also means that humans generally have a greater understanding of animals and their behavior than other races do, because there is still that underlying connection there. And also humans look pretty much like elves, except they don't have the pointy ears and they have got circular pupils. So, yeah. Any brief questions? Did you repeat everything after dwarves? Oh. No. Uh, you can watch the archive back. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be, it'll be, um, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, so... I, 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 saying, I assume this is the, um, oh, where was it? I think it was in your one, the, the, the new island thing? Yeah. City of the island world. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Indeed. Right, so, well, one question about the dwarves. So yeah. How... So it's just their appearance that's different to. Oh yeah, they they still have uh, they did they still have skin and flesh and bones, it's just. The the the. They look like stone or. Yeah, the so. the the patterns and a bit of the texture uh, and yeah. colors, tends to, have that look. Okay. Not always, right. but it tends to be that. I see now. Other than that, all of the stats from. From the the books are of course the same, aside from the the extra little abilities that I've given them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right. Okay. So if that's that, yeah. Then, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me after the stream, and we'll. Work something out that everybody is happy with. So it's really exciting. Yeah, and we can. And in regards to the optional rules, we can of course modify and add or remove as we go. It's not mm. going to be a rigid thing. We've got to continue this way. We'll just have this be an open campaign where you can go wherever you want. You can do whatever you want. For that's okay for a stream, and. <laughs> We'll just see where the game takes everybody, and I'm gonna develop stuff as you go. So right. So yeah. So when would people be 
creating their characters. Like when would we actually start with the with the first session and things? You got fifteen minutes to create your character. Go. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, you said they were fairly quick to do, so hmm. I can probably. Yeah, them. but, yeah. but like when, mean, when, when, until when does it need to be done? Is my question basically. So well, like when are we expecting to actually start the first session of things? Well, not. I don't think this week. Mm -hmm. Because I was hoping for Friday, but now it's only two days away. That seems like not enough time to create characters, to have a look at the rules and create characters and do all that stuff. So. Would it be the same day every week? Uh yeah. If so, would it be when? So Wednesday would be that. Well, Wednesday would be Wednesday. Be Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday would mm. be ideal. Could everyone commit to two hours every Wednesday? From when till when? Well, as long as it's eight till ten. Would that work? Then? January to December. <laughs> well, January is already over. So would eight? Would it be? Would eight to ten work yeah. on Wednesday? On British Wednesdays? time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. Mm. Sounds good. Well, that would be ideal then, pretty much. Great. So, okay. We're looking forward so to before that. Before we end, I will read chat uh, one more no! time. I know. <laughs> one more time. Um, okay, so Blue says, uh, defeating or defeating? Asking for a friend. Yeah, uh, yeah. BGR popped in, said, Elisa, hello guys, gonna be chat only, signal's very spotty. Need to recalibrate the antenna. Uh, already gone, so, hello, goodbye. Um, right. Blue says, speedrun, so could a player make a family of like 180 cloned brothers and just kill one of each episode and replace them all? Uh, how big is the sink if we need lots of time to let it in? Are plumbers and trots ply? Uh, there's the image of let that sink in, yes, the sink, with the door, yes. Uh, Live and learn to forget, they said. Live and learn, but erase ahead. Ah, yes, yes. Um, the song. Uh, BNHA. By Norway hate Armenia? We can go back. Hashtag zombie apocalypse. Does gnome include garden gnome? Willis, let us watch Gnomeo and Juliet together. Roomsbuff continues that with, and then comes, an U then comes a UFO. <laughs> Well, I think it was with the with the world building you started to explain uh, with the with the with the island. One one little bit. Yeah. The gnomes in my setting uh, tend to be a bit smaller than the gnomes in the the rules. So how large? I haven't set a thing yet, but okay. Um, Between s twelve and eighteen inches tall. So uh, <laughs> I like. <laughs> I don't know. Just just take. I don't know, like... Default height, half of that. I don't know. I don't really know what the, the value of the book at the moment okay. is, but just, I don't know, like three feet or, or something like that. Mm. I don't know, just... Do they look baseline. different at all to the... to the what you'd imagine known to look like in, like, D&D &D or something? Or is it the oh, same? Oh, well, they, they actually tend to look quite varied. Okay. Like, their skin tones as well, is it, like, uh, really... No, just Flesh, okay. fleshy, right. human-like skin tones. Sure. Uh, Runesbath says, Morlocks? Ha. <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, Code Monkey says, food and charcoal, and uh, don't mix them up. <laughs> yeah, the bowls. Uh, yeah, yeah, the trolls burn, burn food and eat charcoal. <laughs> uh, Blue says, do I get paid for this overtime? Willis says, you're on salary, no overtime for you. <laughs> uh, Blue says, see, garden gnomes. Uh, my question, please. Can we ban Jamie? Thank you. Uh, Roomspot says, looking forward to it. No, we'll keep Jamie, of course. 
Right. Good everyone. So. Uh, right. So. We'll we'll see you all on Friday for Misk stream, I guess. If people are up for that. Yeah, I can make that. Hmm. Sounds nice. Anyone else? Yeah, should be able. Okay, well let's. Sorry, I'm very tired. Yeah. Yeah, Hello, we did go day. over. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, Blue says, no, no. "Can we keep it? Can we keep it, please?" I promise I'll walk it every day. Jamie, you snooze, you lose. Wake up. About a very long day. Well, we have gone for quite a while. So yeah, I do need to go. Good night, everyone. See you I hope your Friday. throat gets better. Yeah, thanks. Mm. See bye you bye. all soon. Love you, Blue Blue. Yeah. Ciao. Good night.